So I'm using it again. And I didn't call it a different sermon. I didn't recycle a sermon, so it's a different sermon. But anyway, uh, Matthew 16, verses 13 through 16. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked. Who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. The words of God for the people of God, and all God's people said, Praise be to God. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we thank you again, Lord, and we ask this morning that the words of my mouth be your words, that they fall upon open ears and minds, and especially open hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. For, for some of you, uh, know the story of this year's confirmation class, and for those of you that know what, just don't listen to this first part, okay? Uh, when I began planning this about a year ago, uh, we were going to have four students this year, because there was a gap uh, where we didn't have any students in grade school for three or four years or whatever. So even though we had confirmation last year, we did it again this year. We, we, had, we had all seventh graders, uh, so we decided we'd just have a class of four seventh graders, right? Well, the next thing you know, there's five, and, and uh, a couple weeks go into the class and we got six, and another week goes by and suddenly we got eight. And we had uh, six seventh graders and two ninth graders. And, and suddenly we'd gone from kind of a regular to small class to a rather large class for, for, for the parish. And, 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 and I praise the Lord for it. As, as we got to know each other, as time went on, I, I wouldn't trade anyone from this confirmation class or anything. You guys were great. It was a great class, and I just loved the things that you taught me. You taught me, and I just praise you. Thank you so much for that. In our class, we learned many things, uh, but one of the most important things that I tried to show them was how to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ and what that would do for them during their lives. In our, in our reading this morning, Jesus asked the question, who do you say I am? This is a question that we should all ask ourselves and not just a confirmation class. Let's see if we can, we can come to some sort of uh, answer to this. Uh, Jeff Strike tells a story of a warship excuse me, that had just returned from a tour overseas where a young ensign had proved himself to be very responsible and efficient. And because of this, he was given the honor and the opportunity to take command of the ship <coughs> as it went back out to sea again. This young man was good. He was very good. He gave crisp orders. and Everyone knew what, what they did to do as they cast off all the lines and, and the engines ran just right and they, they headed back out into the channel to the open sea. And, and, and the crew was proud of this ensign as they set a new record, a new time record for getting this great destroyer back out to sea. The ensign, of course, was glowing with pride as the seamen came up and gave him the expected message from the captain and read as follows. My personal congratulations on completing this exercise according to the book and with amazing speed. In your haste, however, you have overlooked one of the unwritten rules of seafaring. Make sure the captain is on board before you leave the dock. This is the same way for us, as far as Jesus is concerned. How is it possible for anyone to leave Jesus behind? And it's, and it's pretty easy in, in our world today, because uh, no matter what you believe, you are correct. In other words, you leave Jesus behind by not believing in what the Bible says. You leave Jesus behind when you don't have a prayer life. You leave Jesus behind when you don't attend worship regularly. Just think about those three statements. Isn't that what our society is trying to teach us to do? 
Satan has become so intertwined in our world that we don't even realize we are following the wrong person. Satan is wrong. I would say that much of what our society tells us that is tells us that is right is absolutely wrong. We are in trouble, and we don't even realize it. We think of all is well when we read about all the crime and the murder and all this and that and the flat out lies that we hear all the time. Many people, when many people answer the question, who do you say I am? They answer in some way that is following Satan and not God. Here's what I mean. Some people are somewhat thankful that Jesus has provided <coughs> us another way to get to heaven. Do you see the problem here? Jesus is the only way to heaven. All other paths that you hear about and read about will lead you to the other place. Scripture is very clear about this. Oh yeah, oh, wait a minute, wait, that's right. We don't have to believe what we read in Scripture because all other religions are just as valid. Here we go again. There is no other religion that's valid except Christianity. Once again, Jesus tells us this in Scripture. All others are false gods. We can allow uh, these false religions to exist, but we can never give them credibility. As we studied this year in our confirmation class, we found about many reasons why we shouldn't leave Jesus behind. Uh, we started with creation. You remember that? Way back when we started with creation. Everything you see around you is a result of God's love for you by creating all the things that you need. In our lives, this is the greatest world, the greatest creation that there can ever be. And yet, this is how great it is. It pales. It pales as, as nothing in this, this world compares to the life we will have in heaven come. How can you leave that behind? But many, many people do. They have some goofy idea that they're smarter than God. They, they, they'll, they'll find out the hard way for eternity that that other place is far, far, far worse than anything we can imagine. We studied and found out that God doesn't put us in heaven or in hell. God has no control over where you will spend your eternal life. If you want to choose heaven, Jesus will not stop you. As a matter of fact, he will help you every way that he can. However, Jesus will not stop you if you, also, if you choose hell for your final de destination. The choice is yours and yours alone. I don't know how many times I have heard People say, I can't believe in a God who would send us to the bad place. This is totally false because you make the choice. You make the choice as to where you will go and no one else. There are consequences for your actions. That's why I often tell you that if you haven't accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, what am I going to say next, class? What am I going to say next? Confess your sins and repent and ask Jesus Christ to be Lord and Savior. Do it today. In a few moments, uh, the confirmation students will be taking their vows of accepting Jesus <clears throat> as their Savior. And anyone else here this morning can do the same thing. They can follow along and do the same thing. It may be your only chance to accept Jesus. So why not join these two wonderful students? Your eternity may depend on it. To find out who God is, <coughs> excuse me, we study the Ten Commandments. <coughs> you remember these. Uh, I'd be willing to bet, if I wasn't a good Methodist, that is, I'd be willing to bet that many of you could name three or four or five of these, right? Uh, well, these young people here uh, could name every one of them. At, at one point, they could. I don't know if they can today or not, but that's okay. We learned them once. But we found out that God didn't make these commandments so that we would follow mm -hmm. each one because it's impossible to follow them. God made these Ten Commandments so that we know that we can't follow them. We need help in order to follow these commandments. We need the help of Jesus Christ. Then we study God's love as we read for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. We studied the birth of Jesus in a wonderful movie at Christmas time. We studied how, how Je knowing Jesus uh, will make a better life for us. We studied heaven and what that might be like. Uh, you know, I can't, 
help but think of the sacrifice that Jesus made coming to earth in his physical form. Just think about that for a minute. Jesus was in a perfect place called heaven. We call it heaven. This is a place where there's no hurt, there's no pain, no sorrow, there's nothing bad. It's only good. Jesus came from all this goodness to a world filled with all of Satan's badness. Wow, that's what I call my sacrifice. We learned of some of the things that Jesus tried to teach us. I say some of the things because I believe this is an ongoing process that goes on through our lives. We learned that we're all gifted in some way. We learned about patience and humility and hope. We just had a very good year of learning, and I learned just as much as these young people. But most of all, I tried to help these people to love Jesus with all their hearts and souls and minds. Once again, this is a process, not a destination. We're all on this road, and sometimes we take the wrong street. We learn that no matter what we've done, no matter what we do, Jesus will forgive us and help us to start again down the right path. We learn that there are many, many wrong paths in our schools and with our friends. We learn that it's hard to stand with Jesus when our friends want to do what's wrong. We found out it's not easy to be a Christian. And that's why these young people especially need you today. You people sitting out there who are not in confirmation. They need to see you model Christian behavior. They need to know that they can come to you for help when the occasion rises. And notice I said when the occasion rises, not if. We live in a world that's dominated by evil. So these young people will need help. Some of you made, or many of you made their, a vow of their baptism to help these young people when they need it. And they will need your help now. So keep your vow at this time. Then we tried to love our neighbors as ourselves. We did this by getting to know each other. Eight of us had to get, nine of us had to get to know each other. We did this by trying to help each other out in school and at home. We took part in several mission projects. We did this by trying to be Jesus Christ for others who are less fortunate than us. And all this leads us back to the original question that Jesus asked. Who do you say I am? Now I could go around the sanctuary this morning asking this question and I would get as many answers to that as we have people. So you see, students, there is not one definitive answer to this question. To me, Jesus is the great healer of many of you people. He is the great comforter that I've seen in times of, of death and hardship. He is the great counselor when I go to him in prayer with many of our concerns. And I can go on and on with this telling you about who Jesus is. And I think you can all do the very same thing. The reason we can do this is, is really quite simple. Jesus Christ is all things in all places at all times. When Jesus says, I am, he says it all. Jesus Christ is everything. All good results from are a result of Jesus. He's not capable of doing bad things. There's no place in this world that you can get away from Jesus and his love. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. And this should be more than enough reason for us to just shout up, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He is good, and he is everywhere, and I love him. All I can do is try to help you to love him, too. All I can do is tell you about how Jesus healed our daughter from 35,000 heart episodes a day to one. All I can do is tell you how a person who is suffering from ALS could suddenly pay their rent in April because of an anonymous donor from out east. All I can do is tell you how eight children came to confirmation last fall. And today, we have eight young adults with varying love for Jesus Christ. All I can do is tell you that Jesus is everywhere and that he loves them. So let's answer the question that Jesus has for you. Who do you say I am? Who do you say I am? 
Now this is going to take some congregational response on your part. So I want everyone to repeat after me. I don't want anyone being quiet here now. So please repeat after me as we answer the question, who do you say I am? Please repeat. I believe. I believe. Jesus is the Christ. Jesus is the Christ. The Son of the living God. The Son of the living God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Thank you, Jesus. We just thank you and praise you for all that you give us, Lord, and we just ask for special blessings upon uh, these two confirmation students this morning and the other six from, from Zion. We just praise you for the love because we have, we know that you are God. And we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Read that one. 